Hi everyone, it's me, out in the wild. Uh, this one is a video about showing you uh, how to get it to test it on, actually on your mobile device. Okay, because, yeah, well, we need to see what it looks like on the device uh, to pick things like fonts and actually do the testing, okay, rather than trying to use the um, thing on the screen. So this is my setup. Uh, this is what it looks like from the other side. Um, it's normally, this is moderately messy. Not too messy though, it gets worse. Um, so what we need to do, I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing it. And um, they're kind of a live update way with the USB cord, okay, with this little, you know what a USB cord is, right? <laughs> uh, so we'll do this way, and then I'll show you a way of doing it via the cloud. Both have their pros and cons. This one's kind of the most exciting way, so I'm gonna show it to you, and it's kind of easy. Um, regardless which way we do, you need to download the app for your phone. So if you are on Android or Apple, doesn't matter, go to your App Store or your Play Store, depending on your uh, flavor of phone, and download the Adobe XD app. Okay, um, download that. You'll need to log in with your Adobe ID and password, which you'll always have forgotten, and you need to reset password. Once you've done that, <laughs> and you're actually logged into it, um, it's pretty easy. You need to find a USB cord, you know what those are, uh, then you plug it in. Actually, what I'll do is I'll set up this so the camera can see both of them, hopefully. You wait there. Back inside the computer here for a second. So once you've connected your USB cord to your phone, uh, go up the top here, okay, so this like little device thing, okay, and you should hopefully see your little device here and click on this. This is my Pixel 4, click on that, and then let's jump back out to the other camera. All right, so this is my little setup here. <laughs> okay, I've opened the app on my phone, um, I've got my Adobe XD opened, I clicked on that little icon you just saw in the top corner, and depending on it, sometimes it just jumps to it, but sometimes, see down the bottom here, there's this little icon, connected device, and look at that, they match, kind of. They do, they match exactly. And what's really nice about it is, watch this, it's live updating. Whee, cool, eh? So you can have this plugged in and be actually working on things like font sizes, and you can say, uh, yeah, that is not, work, not quite right. Okay, and maybe the font size is too big on here. So I'm gonna go down to 30, okay? So you can play around with, like, it's so much easier designing icons now because you can actually start touching them and go, hmm, is that big enough to touch? Click on it. Mm, let's click on shopping cart. Oh, it went to the shopping cart. How cool is that? I love it. This is kind of like a, oh, I made something and look, it's working and it's out there. Homepage, ready, learn more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> even a bounce effect. <laughs> ah. So yeah, that is prototyping live on your device. You can obviously update it and it'll jump to the pages that you're working on as well. Can you see the page names here? Okay, and I don't know why I've done this loads, but it's just something magical about it updating nicely. So the other thing to note is you can actually have, we've got our um, mobile phone, you can have your tablet version sitting there, horizontal, vertical. You can plug in more than one device and connect to them all. Um, yeah, awesome. One thing is, there's a couple of things. One is if, like, say, because what we're using this for is, so the client can sit, so you can design with it. This is kind of like this function here. You could have the client sitting with you and using it on their phone as well. Um, you could do it with user testing. So you could have your people using it um, plugged into the computer. Uh, I'll show you another way in a second that's probably better for that. Um, but there are things like hints, so watch this. If I click somewhere, can you see up the top there? It's gonna be a little bit hard. I'm not sure if the editor can zoom in. Okay, but um, it's kind of got little highlights there. Let's go back to the home page actually. Yep. Okay, it's a little hard because I'm not holding my phone. I don't want to wreck the shot. Um, but can you see if I click over, see these things highlight to give a bit of a, a visual cue of what you can click because we're not gonna rig up everything. I don't want to create an account page. I haven't been asked to make one. So it's gonna help people kind of know where they're allowed to go within this mock-up um, and how to get out of it. You're like, well, my phone's kind of trapped in here. You can triple click, ready? One, two, three. And it kind of gives you stuff. You can say uh, those hotspot hints, those that I just showed you, you can turn those off. Um, swipe navigation. We haven't got any swipe navigation yet, okay? Well, we kind of do. And um, by default, your phone will move from next page to next page without you having to like rig it up with the wires. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, but the three click gets you into this, okay? Gives you a few more controls. We won't go through them all. They're all relatively uh, self-explanatory, like take a screenshot, which is cool, and an exit prototype. That's the way to kind of like get out of here. What's quite cool about this is actually I can unplug this now, and weirdly this thing, 
even though it won't live update now, right? I can't live update it. Can you see, can you see me moving it? Probably can't, but it won't live update, but I can resume the preview and it will kind of cache it and remember it. So I can take this now to my meeting and it will um, still be there. If it's a very large document, say it's loads of images and it's like a hundred pages long or a hundred artboards long, and um, plug it in, okay, and wait for a long time and cycle through the different pages to make sure it's all loaded before you unplug it. It'll eventually load for this thing because it's quite simple. It loaded super quick, but yeah, it all works even with that up being unplugged. Oh, that thing again. <laughs> all right, that's the one version, plugging it in. Let me show you the other version. All right, so we're back in. Uh, let me show you the other way. It's quite similar, um, but you need to do a couple of things. So it's not, the, the drawback is there's no live update. Okay, it means that um, you know, you're not gonna be wiggling things around and it's totally updating, but that's useful when you're designing. But let's say you're taking it to the client meeting or to one of your potential users to do some testing. Okay, what you first need to do is make sure that this little icon's here. Might not be updating like mine, that little cloud icon. They may remove that, okay, but um, it is, I am saved to the cloud right now. That is the default for Adobe XD. Okay, you might be one of the people who are fighting it, going, you are file, save as my local document. This particular update isn't going to work. You need to save it to the cloud because that's going to upload it to your Creative Cloud library or your assets panel in the cloud, magically, and your Adobe app, okay, that we just, well, the Adobe XD app that we just downloaded. Okay, so you still need to download that app. We'll have access to it wherever you are. It just won't live update. So let's have a look. If you have got them saved on your computer, okay, uh, let's have a look. I've got a desktop version I made. Okay, look, no cloud. Okay, so what you need to do to make this work, you need to, to save it to the cloud. So file, save as, and by doing that, it's gonna default to the Creative Cloud and it's gonna go with all the other documents, okay? And it will do this. And the cool thing about the cloud saving is that it's always auto saving. So I never save an XD. It just saves magically all on its own without having to do it. You can do it, or if it's grayed out, it means it's already done it for you. But watch this, if I move that, you'll notice that every now and again, it will go and try and update itself. Okay, so there's always kind of a live update in the Adobe Cloud. Okay, you can hit manually save if you're still in the habit of it. You can see it doing it there. So it means now that let's jump out to the app and the other camera. All right, we're out. Um, so because this doesn't live update anymore, it's kind of like a disconnect. So what happens is you save it like we just did to the cloud and then open up your Adobe XD app, the same one, but instead of like this third icon, you use this first one, which is your cloud docs. Okay, and there's my little updated guy. Look, he's updated two minutes ago. Open him up and hopefully, there we go. We've got our little animation going. We got our little prototype going. You can still interact with it like the other one. There he is there, way <laughs> he's still there. The only difference is it doesn't live update, but it also means you don't need a USB cord. You decide what you want to do. Uh, this may change in the future. It might use wireless technology. At the moment it uses Bluetooth, uh, sorry, it uses um, uh, wired USB connection to do that live update, but hey, this is totally fine. Often I just do it this way because I'm not like designing and at the same time. I just want to give it a look over and a test in kind of like stages rather than live. Um, same thing, triple click to get out. Let's update it. So because it doesn't update live, what do you do? So what you can do is even if you're in here, okay, what I'm going to do is, let's say we want to change, I'm going to change something obvious. I'm going to reach over to my computer here and I'm going to change the color of this. You can't see me doing it, but I'm gonna pick this fetching color. There you go. I'm gonna hit save on my computer, so it, just to force it to update to the cloud. Then, so I've done that now. So I've changed it on my desktop. Triple click then, exit, and just load it back up. Okay, it'll go look for the right one. And, hey, it's pink. So I find that's a good way to do it. Uh, the other thing is like, every time it starts, it starts at this page, why? Uh, let me jump back onto the computer now and I'll show you how to force it to start at a particular page. All right, so to get it to start on a particular page, what we need to do is you need to be on prototype mode, okay? And then if you click on these pages, what ends up happening is, can you see here, see this like little icon here? Okay, that is going to just indicate to the app that this is the way to start. Ignore flow, we'll talk about that later on, but we're, well, the basics is this is where the flow starts. You can have multiple flows by having two of them clicked. Okay, and people can decide which flow to follow. We'll do that later on properly. But for now, just have one flow. You can turn it on and off. 
okay? And just have it on the page you want to display first in your prototype. And that is how to make sure that happens. All right, that is testing on a device. It doesn't have to be a mobile phone, it could be a tablet. Obviously testing on a computer, you can just do it on your computer that you're running Adobe XD on. And yeah, that is it. I will see you in the next video. Hi there, my name is Dan Scott. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and if you wanna go further with Adobe XD, there is, I have a full course, there'll be a link in the description, it's called Adobe XD Essentials. There'll be a card up here you can click as well. Uh, but yeah, carry on with your day, enjoy, and I might see you in the full course.